to Unfreedom, Russia, Europe, and America, and he joins me now. And Professor Snyder, I had you on my podcast this week, and you said something that has stuck with me since you said it. In fact, I re-listened because of something you said, which is that your belief is that outright military defeat of Russia by Ukrainian forces, essentially aided by the West, is the only actual way out of this conflict and some kind of enduring peace. Explain to me why you think that's the case. I mean, I, I think I think it's pretty simple logically. If 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 Russia wins the second stage of the war in the Donbas, then they're going to keep going. If there's some kind of stagnation, that's a continuation of the war. The only way for this to end is for Putin to feel subjectively that his position is threatened. And the only way for him to feel that subjectively is for Russia to be defeated on the battlefield. I think the problem that we have is that we're not used to winning. Um, we don't expect the Ukrainians to win. We're not used to winning. But whether we like, you know, whether we're used to it or not, it's the only way to end this war. If you want peace, you, you want a victory, and you want that victory to be just as quick as it can possibly be. What what flows from that uh, logically? I mean, we, so I think everyone agrees that we are in a second phase of the war. We've seen Russian troops pull back from Kiev. They were clearly attempting to encircle it, to 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 take it. Uh, We'll talk about the atrocities left in their wake that are being documented in a second, but things have shifted to the east, and they're clearly very focused on essentially this sort of crescent of the country in the Donbass where there's been fighting since 2014 all the way down to Crimea, which they seized in the same year. What should the West be doing? Well, what, what flows from that is that we need to have a paradigm shift away from talking about things like stagnation and escalation and be thinking in terms of ending the war and, and winning it. We're looking at a second phase of this war, as you say. I think the Russian offense will probably start in about 48 hours. I believe that Mr. Putin is sincere when he talks about wanting to win by May the 9th, which means that there's a critical month ahead of us. Um, the, what logically flows is that the West should be sending as, as many arms and all kinds of assistance just as quickly as it can in the hope that this can be brought to an end. I mean, that's 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 the logical conclusion from all of this. The Donbass is a kind of tragedy. I mean, the Russians are now trying to take cities, which they were also trying to take in 2014. The tragedy of all this is that Nobody in Moscow actually cares at all about the Donbass, and there are very few Russians who care at all about the Donbass, but they're fighting for it because they, they think they have to win some kind of victory, and the only way for this to end is for them not to win that victory. You wrote a remarkable book called Bloodlands, which is about uh, precisely this part of Europe, uh, Ukraine, and, and the area sort of sandwiched, particularly in World War II, between uh, Hitler on one side and Stalin on the other, and the atrocities that were committed there by each of those uh, individuals. What do you, what is your reaction as a historian of this area when you see and read the accounts of what has transpired in places like Bucha and Brodyanka and other places outside Kiev? Well, n n number one, I mean, it's just, it's very obvious, but I, I can't help but point out that the Russians seem to have forgotten that when they won the Second World War, the Ukrainians were on their side. I mean, that has strategic implications, but also has moral implications. This Russian business of calling the Ukrainians Nazis and fascists, as the Russian army is perpetrating exactly the kinds of policies that we remember Nazism and fascism for, is not is not just perverse. It's like a it's like a it's like a second version of the crime itself. But the thing that I'd like to add about this is that Bloodlands is essentially a history of how Ukraine was colonized by you know late European colonial projects, the Soviet the Soviet project which led to starvation and, and famine. Um, the Nazi project, which led to millions of deaths in Ukraine, it was one of the contrib contributors to the Holocaust. You said earlier that Russians withdrew, which is true, but I think what's special about 2022, amidst all of this horror, is that the Ukrainians have won the battle for Kiev. I mean, they've asserted themselves as ex existing, as a nation and a state that does things that other people didn't expect, Russians and Americans alike. And in that way, we're in a new historical epic, and we're out of the epic that I described in Bloodlands. So you think, I mean, th this I think is very important that we are watching something happen here. Again, 
being determined by the outcomes on the battlefield, which I think is a, uh, you're right, there's a sort of discomfort with that, it coming down to who is better at killing whom, essentially, uh, in, in, the, in the liberal imagination, surely, that, that something, some kind of new epoch in this part of the world is being birthed here on the battlefield in Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, you know, the American left specializes in, in being right and losing, and the American right specializes in being wrong and winning. And it's important, you know, every once in a while to be right and to win. Um, and, you know, just think about the converse. Think what happens if the Ukrainians lose. Think what happens if they've never fought. You know, our democracy, democracy around the world will be rocking on their heels right now. And so it's not just about Ukraine and Russia. It's also about the rest of us. We, all of us, need for Ukraine to win on the battlefield. And I agree with yeah. you. I wish it were yeah. some other kind of contest. But here we are. This is the way things are. And, and what we need to have happen is for there to be a victory so this war, which we hate, can end.